make sure that guy's cooking. Isn't that weird that for some of these screens it doesn't show up up here? I think it's because um, the application takes over the, the toolbar, but it's, I don't know, just seems weird. I mean, everything else is supposed to show up up there, but it must be that there's a, this must just be the overlap. Who knows? All right, so last time we were talking about uh, PCBs, process control blocks, uh, which encapsulate our processes to support context switching, right? Context, context switching, which sounds like it would be an excellent quiz at some point, intent, is when a process leaves the CPU or comes back onto the CPU. It's the act of storing all the information associated with the process so that it can be reloaded into the CPU later. Okay, so all the register information, blah, 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 blah. So we're seeing the process control block here, which is a data structure for holding a bunch of stuff associated with a process. So we have the process state, the program counter. Remind me, what's the program counter for? Why well, clean my glasses? All right, I think that's Abe. <laughs> I have really bad eyes. <laughs> Do I? Better or worse? Be, really? Well, yeah. I mean, I think I got kind. Of, I think the glasses gives me kind of the, the kind of the, the fat nerd look. I think that's kind of right for computer science. Without the glasses, is like I'm trying something else. You know, I'm going for more of the beach thing. You know, beach body, speedo thing. What? Why is why is random people over here laughing? <laughs> That's creepy. So before he gets in the hot tub, you gotta warn him first, otherwise he won't have that speed up. Right? Off the record, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> 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 So the hope there is that the, can't, the the microphone wasn't strong enough to pick out the commentary from that side. And so my side sounds completely like, like oh, okay, you must be talking about something operating system related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creep me out, Yanter. <laughs> All right. What? What was, did you answer the program counter thing? Oh, or did we go off on a tangent because I couldn't see you? Well, what's, a, what's the program counter? I don't remember what line of code we're on. Okay, what line of our assembly code we're on. CPU registers, this is going to be the collection of the values stored in the CPU registers to support the context switching. And then these other things will also support the context switching. This allows us, uh, this lets us know whether it's uh, currently in I.O. Uh, or not. Uh, so we know whether or not we have to put it in line for uh, to share one of those devices. Okay, so last time we were writing some code to support this, and we're going to write a very simple PCB um, for our simple operating system that we're going to be creating, or operating system simulation is probably the better way of putting it. So we decided that we created a object for storing process state that has all of our states in there, our five different states, and we can call them by name, but in reality we have an integer uh, so that we can easily load that into a CPU if we had to, okay? Because um, at some point we're going to have a CPU object that's going to mimic the CPU for us, simulate the CPU. All right, and then did we actually test that. We didn't actually get as far to test that yet. Um, so let's just have a um, uh, display method and we'll have this guy print out system. Out. Process State is this dot process state, which should be a integer, right? 
All right, so then from our driver, we can create a PCB, call this P1 is equal to a new PCB, and PCBs didn't take anything, right? No, no, no inputs for our constructor. And then we can say p1.display. And there's our process state, zero being new. Now, at what point does a process go from being new to being ready? So when you double click on Microsoft Word and a process is generated, which then gets thrown into a PCB at the, at the programming side, programming level for the operating system. So a process is an actual thing. It'll probably be represented by an object as well, but it's a, we're going to say living, breathing thing, and that's in the Terminator world. Um, so uh, uh, at what point does that PCB go from a state, or does that process go from a state of being new to being ready? which means that it's going to be in that queue for our, uh, where's our picture for that? Right here. It goes from being new to being ready, which means it's waiting for that CPU in here. What's that process like, do you think? What does it mean for a process to be new? So I double click on a process, I double click on Word, and immediately a process has to be born, right? Okay, you know, it has to be born. So now a process exists. What has to happen with that process before it can be, uh, before it's capable of being uh, in line for the CPU? Go ahead. Okay, so get into memory, load some data into the uh, um, uh, the data portion of it, the, the code portion of it, set the program counter to zero, all that junk, right? So if we go back into our PCB constructor, right now we're only storing process state. We also need to store our program counter. And we talked about this last time, right? That's what we were talking about at the very end. How... How big does the program counter need to be? How many individual instructions of assembly code do we need to support? So right now, just to keep it simple, we're going to say this guy is a long, which will allow us to have, what do we decide? Uh, like, was it something, was it five quintillion? Five quintillion lines of assembly code. And we say that's a lot, it probably is a lot, but it might not be a lot forever, right? Or at some point in the future, we might have to rely on there being um, uh, primitive types that extend beyond long. Uh, we already have it in object types. We have big integer. So we could certainly use a big integer for this. Problem is, as big integers get... Uh, uh, you know, big integers store an arbitrary size. We've all seen big integers in here, right? Uh, actually, there's. A, have we ever seen? We've never seen one. Okay, let me show them to you real quick, just so you, you know it won't take very long. But um, so, big integer is a class. Just comment out these two things here. And their job is to store arbitrary size numbers. So. Big integer b is equal to a new big integer, and we'll go ahead and start this guy off at zero. Actually, um, the constructor for big integer that's what we'd have to set it to. So let me import java.math where big integer lives. So I'm going to create a new variable called b. And this guy's going to hold the big integer associated with zero. Okay? Similarly, you can create big integers. And let me just uh, <laughs> confirm this. I think you create them with a string.
So while I'm doing this, uh, the purpose of a big integer is to hold arbitrary size integers. Um, the problem is, is that it's probably representing this under the hood as like linked lists. Um, so the larger that integer gets, the slower it's going to become. So we have some built-in things. So this is very similar to what we've done with our process state. We have some static fields, one representing the big integer for one, 10, and zero. So maybe some common big integers you might start with. Then we have the constructor for big integer, which you can take in a, a byte array. Um, we can take in a string for val. We could also take in a string for val as well as the radix that it's in. So this will do conversion for us. So we can have arbitrary size binary. That might come into hand, come in handy for us at some point, maybe. Um, but in any case, the problem with using big integer for this is speed. Okay, we are now relying on system RAM by default. We we immediately give up the access to the registers. We give up the access to the cache, and we jump to the very, very, very slow system memory, relatively speaking. Right? We think of our eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM as being uh, uh, fast, but for interfacing with the CPU, it's, it's just too slow. It's like being on foot on the interstate, something like that. Um, that's actually maybe a, a decent analogy. It probably is about like that, the, the, the real speed difference, just to kind of put it in uh, uh, perspective. But in any case, we can just keep adding stuff to big integers so we don't hit limitations. Well, we do have a limitation. The limitation is size of system memory. Um, it's actually a partial lie. Um, what's the, uh, based on your knowledge of the Java virtual machine, what would uh, the actual limitation for size of big integer be? So Java is a program, right, that launches a virtual machine, which is a piece of software that mimics a computer. It's going to request its own memory footprint. So really, the maximum size of a big integer is the amount of memory the Java virtual machine has requested from the CPU at launch. And that's a, that's a configurable thing. Uh, I think Eclipse lets you configure it, but at the command line for the, the Java compiler, or the Java, uh, the Java runtime, We have all sorts of options. We can pass it at runtime. Uh, and one of them is for memory. So that maybe that's the non-standard options. Might come back to this. Yep, I think it is. <clears throat> ah, here we go. Uh, initial Java heap size. This would be the amount of memory that uh, uh, Java has access to. Um, you could also pick the maximum heap size. So this allows it to start off with a certain amount and grow up to something else. And here's our thread stack size. This might be of interest to Tim and Evan. Um, I mean, with with Fritz in the picture now, I didn't know if there was going to be some stacking issues or something. <laughs> All right. So, in any case, we can see when Eclipse is calling the Java runtime here, it's going to be passing these command line options. So this is another example of, you know, what Eclipse is doing for us, interfacing with this command line program. All right, so again, IDE doing a lot of uh, heavy lifting for us. So the Java virtual machine could request more RAM at runtime. I don't know what the default is. The default's going to be something reasonable for a program. You know, maybe it's requesting something I don't know, half the size of what Photoshop requests, something like that. You think about our Java programs, most of the programs we write are not going to be crazy memory intensive, right? If you are writing... Um, maybe a simulation program or something like that where you know you're going to be taking up a lot of system memory. Then you move down to these command line options where you specifically request the runtime for that to be larger. 
That makes sense. And we'll try to kill it off here in uh um, is there a option to kind of print the defaults? We can also run it in client or server mode. Server uh, server mode runs in kind of a, a lower level thing because usually servers aren't doing tons. They're just re retrieving a lot of connections. So these would probably have by default a significantly higher thread stack count. <laughs> I... <laughs> Man, you hear all those bids I'm getting on eBay? Uh, like a thousand Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Well, now I, uh, I may or may not have given a student a bunch of cash to go buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and he opened them all up and sold the good ones. Huh? I don't know. It's like there's a new set that just came out, and he's a scaler, so he weighs packs. So he only opens the ones that have good stuff in them, and then he sells the other packs, advertising them as these packs have already been scaled. Um, so they're not worth as much as a full pack because you're probably not going to get the good, good cards out of it. But if you're trying to build a collection of cards, then you can get those for a cheaper price. So he listed like 300 cards on... Um, I don't know if we can get the, Oh, this is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, if you've ever run a Java program before, um, you know, people write Java programs for them to be platform independent, right? So you can download that application and it'll run on any machi machine. Well, you can use the virtual machine to launch a splash image while it's loading. Um, so you actually do that at the virtual machine level, not, at, not in your application. That's what, so when it's while it's loading, it does those other things. Just in my initial scan here, I don't see. Maybe is this going to give us something? Let's try it. Xprof. Ooh, thread ticks, Nate, Evan. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the default is, and I don't know how to show it. So we'll leave that as an exercise for the reader. But it'll obviously be substantially smaller than size of memory. So that's going to be a limiting factor for us on big integer. And we'll try to push it here. So um, in any case, back to big integer. Can we see that fine, or do I need to make it bigger? Is that more bestest? We can definitely see that, right? Definitely see that? Don't tell me, tell Evan. <laughs> this is like this is like give Evan a hard time week. <laughs> I don't know if that was phrasing. Um, okay. So in any case. In any case, we have a method called add, where we can add to big integer another big integer. All right, so we're going to try to really slow down our machine just so we can uh, um, uh, have it, uh, <laughs> so we can have it grow faster. <laughs> we're going to add ten to our number over and over again. So we'll say while true. Um, we'll say b is equal to b dot add big integer dot 10. 
And then what we'll do is we'll say int count is equal to zero. Every single time we add, we'll say count plus plus. And then we will put this inside of a try catch because eventually we're going to have an exception. Number of ads is count. All right, so we have an infinite loop here that's just going to keep adding 10 to our big integer forever until we run out of heap space in Java. We'll count how many of those ads we, we were able to accomplish. When the exception occurs, we'll catch it and print out the number of ads. Actually, is it, is it running? Usually you get the red light there. Just print out starting and it's all right, yeah, it's it's cooking. I'm guessing I didn't hit it the first time. I must have zigged off of there. So, in any case, we'll come back and check on it here in a moment. We'll let that guy crash. Um, so, the question I had posed was, how does a process go from a new state to a ready state? Well, the process is initially created when we double-click on the application. Now we need to actually load that guy into memory. Um, and when we actually talk about memory management, we're going to talk about we probably don't load the entire process into memory. We probably load just a portion of it into memory, you know, enough of the code for it to start execution. That makes sense? So, you know, if your uh, uh, Photoshop application has a million lines of code associated with it, we might load the first thousand. Just use that as a number. Um, and those get loaded into memory in a certain way modern day memory management does something called a paging uh, system but whatever that means they get loaded into memory so really only the first thousand of those guys are available right now okay um, so if we get to line a thousand one or something greater than that if we're jumping down because you know typically programs don't just linearly go right we have if statements and things like that that might branch us over to other parts of the program so we might go from line number 600 to line 15,231. So now we need to go and request that to come back into, well, to get into memory for the first time. So we swap it into memory from virtual memory. All right, so moving into a ready state is going to involve getting a process into partially into real memory, partially into virtual memory. Now it's in there. Is it ready to go now? Anything else have to happen with the process before it can start cooking on the CPU? When you double click on Microsoft uh, Word or Photoshop, whatever, Word's a good example, uh, what's the first thing that happens? Well, you see the little load screen and stuff like that. That's, that's during the, the birthing process. Then usually it what? It checks for updates. Is that a running thing? Yeah, that's something that's, that's happening on the CPU. So after this guy's in memory, he's kind of in that staging area to say, I am ready to run. So that's when he'll, his state will turn into the ready state. All right. So we want to simulate this with our process. Oh, still cooking. So how would we simulate that with our process? Who controls the process state? That's the question. So we have something called process management. This is our PCB. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'll just talk about it, then we'll skip it when we get to it. So we have something called process management, which is one of the features of the operating system. 
right? Our operating system has a manager who manages our processes. So when we double click on Microsoft Word, the process manager is going to become aware of that. He's going to initialize that variable in Java speak uh, associated with that PCB, load all the stuff into it, put it into memory or put it into virtual memory, whatever makes sense. So that process manager is going to be working with the memory manager. Okay, for right now, we're just going to say loading into memory, and we'll just assume that happens. And at that point, once it's loaded into memory, the process manager then switches a PCB to be in a state of ready. That makes sense? And probably will then also load that PCB into a queue. At the end of the day, it's probably going to be a heap. And I mentioned uh, either last class or two classes ago what a heap is. Any of you retain that information? Not Evan, not Tim, not Fritz. Fritz, did you retain it? I did talk about it, right? I mentioned a heap and said what it was. Tim? No. <laughs> You're not retaining crap these days. What's up? Too much pizza stuff? <laughs> this is what happens when you work with dough all day. So what's a heap? Priority, priority queue. Yeah, so we think about like think about a queue, it's a line, like at McDonald's, right? Priority queue would be a line, but sometimes we let people cut to the front of the line because they're more important than other people. Right? So like when I come into McDonald's and I'm hungry, I go right to the front of the line. And the only people that complain complain are little kids. They have no filter. Like mom, the fat man cut in front of us. <laughs> Just don't make eye contact to me. <laughs> again, you don't have a filter either. Huh? You don't have a filter either. I just ignore them. I pretend like they're not there. <clears throat> and I just start ordering. And the people behind the counter, they're all flustered. And they're going to mess up my order anyway, so I'm really taking a very low risk. <laughs> and you can say All right, so a heap is a priority queue. That could... Definitely be a, uh, uh, a quiz at some point. So uh, you might want to retain it this time. It sounds like a good quiz question to me. Right, Alex? It sounds like a good quiz question, doesn't it? Yeah. Next, next time. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> all right. Um, <clears throat> so this process manager is in charge of all this crap. So we need to go and create him. Oh my gosh, we're still cooking? Here, I, I want to do something here real quick. I want to say, if count mod 100 is equal to zero, system.out.println count. What happened? Well, let's just make sure it's doing something. A thousand will happen pretty quick too, but all right. Well, it's definitely cooking. So then, let's do this based on hundred thousand. So entertaining to watch that. It's like enamoring, isn't it? So what do you do? I just watch numbers. Yeah, that's it. That's the it's hypnotizing. What does enamoring mean? Enamoring is the right word, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's enamoring. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, like Abe's been accusing me of getting too too excited about computer science stuff. Hey, didn't you say? How, did weren't you the one making fun of me about that? Somebody made fun of me and said that you know you get so excited about this stuff. And I'm up here. I'm performing, right? I'm an artist. Was it Tim? Was it you? 
He wouldn't retain it anyways. He wouldn't remember if he, if, he's, <laughs> if he said it. <clears throat> I actually find computer science very boring. When I'm up here, I'm acting. Okay. I'm pretending like I'm interested in this crap. Did it? Yeah. That's because I hit the stop button? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha! All right. Let's just agree that it eventually would have stopped. <laughs> All right. Um, just, what, just whatever. Actually, hold on. Let's multiply. Let's see if we can run out of space there. Oh, well, we did circle back. So we actually did run out of maximum size integer. That's actually disheartening because it's supposed to be arbitrary. Why is it going negative? Oh, oh, see, I was testing you. This is our count value. Yeah, count value only goes up to it's a it's a what did we decide it was? It's an int. Just print. Let's print out B. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's start it off at one, just in case I can't spell one. I'm so excited. And we haven't even gotten to the next one yet. It's scrolling. Oh, look at this. How do I get it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this. Ah, <laughs> I captured it. That was a long number. Yeah, like the bank teller will be able to read it. Um. We're still at the first one, aren't we? Well, I stopped it. Let's do it by a uh, thousand. We're gonna we're gonna do something here. Because now my goal in life is to crash this. Ha! I learned that word yesterday. Multiplier. That's right. I already knew the I knew both of those. I just got confused on which which was which, right? So we'll multiply it by, what's this number? Oh, everybody relax. One, two, three. So that's 100,000. This is a trillion, one trillion. 
<laughs> just agree with me? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, one, it's, one, it's one trillion. Didn't it originally show more than more than two lines? Man, the number is so long, it's not even coming back in here. So it looks like what it ju does, it just arbitrarily grabs the biggest space it's going to allow you to have. And we'll just work within that space. So at some point, I'm not done. You're so smart, don't you? <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. So let's do one multiply initially. That way it will grow exponentially. Boom. Oh, look how slow that math is. At least we're seeing that. We're seeing the speed of the math. Let's do it just once. Man, I can't even stop it. I'm, I'm so busy. <laughs> So here, we're just, we're just going to print it out every time. <laughs> Terry's class spent 25 minutes breaking programming language. <laughs> All right, well, whatever. We can see it's slow. And believe me, eventually we will run out of space. But certainly we can appreciate what Big Integer does for us because this is running out of space way before a long would, right? Or, or way, it would be way after a long would. So if I, if we did this same thing with a long, um, let's do, uh, we actually don't need to try, but just whatever, I'll just leave it for now. Uh, we'll just start it off at uh, we'll start it off at that, and each time through we'll say num times equals num, and we'll print it out every time. We're gonna run out of space pretty quick. Oh, you don't find that impressive? Not numb. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Num start off at a big number. Let's just do num plus plus. I wonder if right off the bat my math was too big to store in num. So it literally zeroed out. It, we had to carry a bit. This should show us numbers. All right, so let's now just print it out every hundred.
if count mod 100 is equal to 0, then print crap. So what we're looking for is eventually it's going to go to a negative number, which means we ran we uh, we ran out of uh, space. And we sh we're getting close, I think. It's like watching the uh, the gas when you fill in your gas tank. You just watch the far left number to see if it's going up. All right, so we're about to pick up our last zero, or second to last zero. Oh, I actually grew that direction. Oh my gosh. On that. Okay, so now let's do Just multiply it by a hundred each time. We're already out too big. What? What? Why isn't that working? This number times two should be a real number, right? That's what I was thinking. It wasn't a number even at the beginning. This isn't going to make any difference, but I'm just going to take it out anyway. You think so? Ha! It's testing you. All right. Why isn't that? Okay, that's a real number. Well, these are all real numbers. What the heck? That's today's real question. We're breaking Java right off the bat. So I create a long called num, start off at this number. Is that a million? That's no, it's a, it's a hundred million, 10 million, a trillion. It's five. All right, so. Well, true, <laughs> we're going to take num and multiply it by this number. Now let's just multiply it by 2. And then 
display it every time. Uh, we can actually display it every hundred, that should be fine. Why is it zero? Evan, what am I doing wrong? We got a real number. We multiply that number by two. I wonder, actually, I think this is the problem. You know? So not like the number for some times two increment count. What the heck? Did you figure out what's going on? I'm trying to break longs this time. So I got a long called num. Well, I, I can, but I want to know why this isn't working. I mean, we're, we're in our final minute here. So it starts off at num as that. Keep going. Multiply it by 2 each time. And I even printed it out every time. And it's still just a bunch of zeros. Well, actually, hold on. It wasn't a bunch of zeros at the beginning, was it? Well, we, we. <sighs> oh, didn't get it. So we should probably we should probably do this. Uh, I think it's because. Yeah, are we are we breaking I/O? All right. Well, we'll call it quits for today. We're either breaking long or breaking I/O. One of the two. But in any case, I think we we broke Java. We broke some aspect of Java because this shouldn't this should scale just fine. If we did this with ints, I think it would be fine. Whatever. All right, we're going to write our process manager at some point uh, next class. I'll see everybody on Monday.